Hello everyone and welcome to today's lesson, Grade 6, Module 4, Lesson 20, Writing and Evaluating Expressions Using Multiplication and Division. Today's student outcomes, students develop expressions involving multiplication and division from real world problems. Students will also evaluate these expressions for given values. Opening exercise here, number one, the farmer's market is selling bags of apples. In every bag, there are three apples. Letter A, complete the table. So take a moment, pause the video, complete the table, and come back when you're ready. All right, so here's a completed table. You can see the total number of apples column is three, six, nine, 12. And then in this last one is the expression 3B. Letter B. What if the market had 26 bags of apples to sell? How many apples is that in all? So 26 bags to figure out the total number of apples. Pause the video and come back when you're ready. So here's our answer. If B is 25, then 3 times 25 equals 75 apples. Letter C. If a truck arrived that had some number, A, more apples on it, then how many bags would the clerks use to bag up the apples? So on this one, it's a little different. You're going from the apples column to the bags column. So pause the video, come back when you're ready. So here's our answer. The expression you'd use this time is A divided by 3. So the number of apples divided by 3 will give you the number of bags. And in this case, if there are, there should be an E here, if there are one or two apples left over from this shipment, another bag will be needed but will not be full. So there's a chance you'll have a remainder of, let's say, one or two. You'll still need a bag, but it won't be full. Letter C. If a truck arrived that had 600 more apples on it, how many bags would the clerks use to bag up the apples? So think of letter B. It's pretty much solved the same way. Pause the video and come back when you're ready. So here's our answer. We had 600 apples. We know there's three in a bag. So we ha end up with an answer of 200 bags. So now we're going to take a look at parts D and B. And letter E is asking us, how is part D different from part E? So go back, pause the video, look at part D and part E, and then see how they're different. Come back when you're ready. So this is a pretty lengthy answer here, but just make sure that your answer is something close to that. If not, you'll need to erase it and get this answer written down. So part D, gives us the number of apples and asks us to find the number of bags. Therefore, we needed to divide the number of apples by three. Part B, on the other hand, gave us the number of bags and asked for the total number of apples. Therefore, we needed to multiply the number, multiply the number of bags by three. So there was a big difference. Again, going this way, we normally multiply, and when we head back the other way, we normally divide. All right, so that first one was a great warm-up. Let's take a look at number two. And before you begin number two, if you want to grab yourself a calculator, that's fine. We're going to be dealing with some pretty big numbers on number two. Number two, in New York State, there is a five-cent deposit on all carbonated beverage cans and bottles. When you return the empty can or bottle, you get the five cents back. So go ahead, uh, complete this table, pause the video, come back when you're ready. I will give you the first one here. Five cents. So, and again, pause the video, come back, and we'll see how, what your table looks like. So here's a completed table. You can see the number of cans all the way up to C cans, and then on the right hand side, all the values that are filled in for the refund. Double check your table. Once you're ready, we'll continue on. Letter B, 
if we let C represent the number of cans, what is the expression that shows how much money is returned? So the re expression is here. It's 5 cents times C, and that came from this portion of the table. All right, let's take a look at letter C. It says, use the expression to find out how much money Brett would receive if he returned 222 cans. So we can use this expression here to figure out how much money he would get back if he returned 222 cans. This would be a good one to use your calculator on. Pause the video, solve, come back when you're ready. All right, so here's our answer. If C is 222, then we multiply the 5 cents times the number of cans, which is 5 cents times 222, and your final answer is $11.10. Letter D. If Gavin needs to earn $4.50 for returning cans, how much money, excuse me, how many cans does he need to collect in return? So a little hint from th for this one. You're actually going from this column to the first column. So pause the video, solve, come back when you're ready. So here's what it looks like. We take the total amount of money that he returned, we divide it by five cents, and that gives us the number of cans that Gavin brought back. Letter E. How is part D different from part C? So if you remember in our first problem that we did, we're going to compare the different ways to solve part D and C. Pause the video and come back when you're ready. So again, it's a pretty lengthy answer. I'll read my answer off. Make sure yours is pretty similar to this. If not, make those corrections. Part D gives the amount of money and asks for the number of cans. Therefore, we needed to divide the amount of money by, amount of money by five cents to give us the number of cans. And part C gives the number of cans and asks for the amount of money. Therefore, we needed to multiply the number of cans by 5 cents. So again, when you work to the right on a table like this, you're going to multiply. And when you move to the left, you're going to divide. Number three, different problem altogether. The fare, which would be the amount for a subway or a local bus ride, is $2.50. Part A, complete the table. Again, pause the video, come back when you're ready, and feel free to use your calculator. So here's our completed table. Double check these values, make sure they're all correct, and then we'll continue on when you're ready. Part B, if we let R represent the number of rides, what is the expression that shows the cost of the rides? Pause, solve, come back. So here we can see that we'd simply take $2.50, or you can say 2.5, times the number of rides, and that will give you your total cost for those rides. Letter C. C. Use the expression to find out how much money 60 rides would cost. So now we're going to use this expression here to find out the cost of 60 rides. So here's the work, if R is 60, and we're using this expression, we're going to put in $2.50 times 60, and that would cost you $150 for those rides. Letter D, if a commuter spends $175 on a subway or bus ride, how many trips did the commuter take? And again, the hint is you're starting in this column and you're working this way. So if you can use this expression, you'll be able to figure out how many rides the commuter took. Pause, solve, come back when you're ready. So here's our expression. We have $175 divided by 250. And when we solve, we'll see that the commuter took 70 trips on either a bus or a subway. Again, how is part D different from part C? Here we can see that part D gives the amount of money and asks for the number of rides. Therefore, we needed to divide the amount of money 
by the cost of each ride two dollars and fifty cents part c gives the number of rides and asks for the amount of money therefore we needed to multiply the number of rides by 250. number four a pendulum swings through a certain number of cycles in a given time. Owen made a pendulum that swings 15 times every 15 seconds. So a pendulum is very similar to, well it is what you see on a clock. Sorry about that, I had to pause the video. This should be 15 times here, and I'm pretty sure your book indicates that already. So again, a pendulum swings 12 times for every 15 seconds. So on this table, we can start out by filling in 12 here and 15 here. And go ahead, pause the video, and come back when you're ready to compare your table to the correct answer. So here's what a completed table looks like. Um, again, check your table for accuracy and make any corrections that you need to. And then we can move on to part B. Part B, Owen and his pendulum team set their pendulum in motion and counted 16 cycles. What was the elapsed time here? So the answer is 20 seconds. There's actually a number of ways that you can solve this. One easy way might be to figure out the ratio here of 12 to 15. So if you take 12 fifteenths and put it in simplest form, you end up with four fifths. I divided them both by three. And I think to myself, if four is the cycles, then I can put equals 16 over x. So four times four is 16 for my cycles. And then my seconds on the bottom, five times four equals that 20 seconds. So that's one way that you can solve it. There are other ways that we can explore later on. Letter C. Write an expression for the number of cycles a pendulum swings in S seconds. Go ahead, give it a shot, pause the video, come back when you're ready. So here's what we're looking at, a few different answers that you could have. You could have that 12 fifteenths times the seconds, like I mentioned earlier. You could simplify it, or you could write it as 0 0.8, which is 8 tenths. It's basically, it's the decimal form of this fraction. Letter D. In a different experiment, Owen had his pendulum team, Owen and his pendulum team, counted the cycles of pendulum for 35 seconds. How many cycles did they count? So this time we have 35 seconds, and we're looking for how many cycles. Go ahead, give it a shot, pause the video, come back when you're ready. So the answer is 28 cycles. So in this case, if we do what we did before, and we use this four fifths, four would be the number of cycles, five would be the number of seconds, and we put 35 seconds on the bottom, we can, whoop, the answer's jumping out of my head. Five times seven is 35, so four times seven is 28, and that's where you end up with that 28 seconds. So I do like to use these proportions, it makes it pretty easy to solve. Great job on today's lesson. When you're all done, go back and review anything you need to. And then after that, complete your exit ticket and bring it to me when you're done.